This video is sponsored by Atlassian. Let's explore the dynamics of how cybersecurity teams work. With experience in both the red team and blue team roles, I've had the opportunity to see firsthand how cybersecurity teams collaborate. Hi, my name is Sandra, and I've currently worked as a cybersecurity analyst for four years now, and I also make videos on how to get started in a career in cybersecurity with no previous experience. At a high level, I categorize cybersecurity teams into three different buckets, the red team, the blue team, and everything GRC or governance, risk, and compliance. Offensive security teams, aka red teams, are responsible for simulating cyber attacks on an organization system, while defensive cybersecurity teams, aka blue teams, are responsible for protecting an organization from cyber attacks. And GRC teams help manage risk and compliance with external auditors. Of course, this is just a high level overview, but if you're working in a cybersecurity role, you'll likely fall into one of these three buckets. Typically, cybersecurity teams will work in silos. For example, the blue team will have their own long-term projects as well as the day-to-day -day tasks that the team needs to get done, like keeping up with cybersecurity news or analyzing log anomalies. And the red team may be working on scheduled red team assessments, writing reports, and sharing vulnerability findings with relevant stakeholders. The GRC team usually deals with everything auditing and compliance related. However, there is also something called purple teaming, which is when the red team and the blue team work together to make the organization even more secure. This collaboration helps them understand each other's work, identify gaps, and enhance their skills together. One of the biggest hurdles for purple teaming is that it can be difficult to track each of the team's responsibilities outside of their own respective projects. To foster collaboration between the red team and the blue team, JIRA allows both teams to streamline their workflows, track vulnerabilities, and communicate effectively. The red team can create issues on JIRA to report identified vulnerabilities that they find, providing detailed descriptions, attack vectors, and potential impacts. Using this information, the blue team can then create issues to track their progress in mitigating those vulnerabilities and implementing necessary security measures to remediate them. JIRA allows both teams to create accountability and a clear understanding of the work that needs to be done. It also helps in tracking the progress of vulnerability assessments and remediation efforts. Some other potential tasks that could be found on a purple teaming JIRA board include enhancing detection and response, validating security controls, and enhancing threat intelligence initiatives. The most common way for blue team and red teams to collaborate is to simulate an attack scenario. This can be done in two ways depending on the stakeholders involved. In the first scenario, the red team simulates an attack on the organization's network targeting specific assets or applications. The blue team isn't aware that the red team is simulating the attack. The goal of this scenario is to see how long it takes for the blue team to detect the attack quarantine the affected assets, mitigate any damage, and document the incident. Now, another case would be when the blue team knows that this attack is coming and that they're able to actively look for it, which gives them the opportunity to learn from the red team's attack execution so that they can look for something similar from a real threat in the future. The main difference is whether or not this attack is catching the blue team off guard. Again, this will really depend on the goals of the exercise along with the time or resource constraints. Purple teaming also helps the blue team enhance their incident response processes and procedures. This includes evaluating the speed and effectiveness of detecting, containing, and mitigating security incidents. For example, what are the differences in your processes when it comes to a P0 incident versus a P4 incident? And how well are these incidents documented? Who are the stakeholders that are involved in jumping on that bridge line and discussing potential mitigations for the incident as well as lessons learned? This scenario will also help the blue team understand the gaps in terms of alerting. For example, if the red team got access into a specific account or asset and they were able to compromise it, what kinds of alerts were the blue team receiving or if they were receiving any at all? Purple teaming can easily find these kinds of control gaps and because it's done in a secure environment, you're able to fix these gaps and holes in your reporting and alerting without going through a real-world attack. By simulating these attacks, the red team can also learn more about the organization's security posture and environment so that they're also able to better conduct red team assessments down the line. Maybe after conducting this exercise, your team finds that the way that the red team was able to compromise an asset or an account was through a phishing attack. 
they could have sent a very realistic looking email to an employee at your organization and this employee in turn shared their credentials with the red teamer which exposes a control gap for phishing training. Being able to understand what each team's roles and actions are going to be when XYZ scenario comes up is going to be really important in making sure that the teams are collaborating effectively. And of course, it also fosters continuous improvement on both sides because there's effective knowledge sharing and teamwork across the board. All right, so that's it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions on red teaming, blue teaming, or how both teams work together effectively in a purple team. You can also learn more about Atlassian's cross-functional team collaboration tools linked in my description below. Thank you guys so much for watching and if this video was helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!